What is going on, Panthers Nation? Carolina Dad here, your host of the Two Growls, One Roar podcast. Here we are, folks. O and four. I don't think anyone could have predicted O and four. Even the naysayers, even the outsiders that look at our organization and think we're a train wreck. O and four. We have to win one of these games, right? At least a game in the span of a month. Going back to last year, Frank Wright has not won a football game since October 16th of last year when he was with the Indianapolis Colts. It's been almost a year since he's won a game as a head coach. And on Sunday at Bank of America Stadium, if you attended the game, and I know there's a few of you that were able to attend, or if you watched on TV, just as predicted, It was a purple wave of Vikings fans. Tons of Vikings fans in attendance. And it's going to be like that for every game this season that's a home game for the Carolina Panthers. Now, luckily, we get to go on the road the next two weeks. Forget about our problems. At least forget about them at home as we travel to Detroit and then Miami. Go into the bye week at 0-6. Come out of the bye week playing the Texans, which also looks like a loss, the Colts. And then maybe, just maybe, we pull out a win against the Chicago Bears. I don't think so. (laughs) With the way that we've been playing, it was another deflating loss. And at some point, you just run out of things to say. You just look at the situation. Coming into the game, there were reports that Scott Fritter was looking around for New help at the wide receiver position, at the safety position. This We are in a rebuild mode. And if you have Scott Fitter doing the rebuild, I don't know how much rebuilding is going to happen or I don't know how beneficial it's going to be because he trades away, like I said, Christian McCaffrey. Out of that, you get Mingo and DJ Johnson, and that's it. It's not looking good when McCaffrey looks like a true MVP caliber caliber player where do we go from here I mean looking at the game itself we were in the game just as usual I mean that's the story of this season we're in the game for the first two quarters even the third quarter the Panthers have now lost four oh sorry I was about to say that wrong 54 games in a row when trailing in the fourth quarter 54 games in a row Since David Tepper took over this team in 2018, we have not had a winning record and we have not made the playoffs. We are on the verge of a sixth straight losing season, which would tie the franchise record. Not a record that you really want to tie, but those are the things that stack stack up. And here's where I sit. I don't think Tepper cares. He's got his MLS franchise. He's got the Carolina Panthers franchise. And whether it is a, like I said, whether it's a a Carolina Panthers fan sitting in that seat or an away fan sitting in that seat, doesn't matter to him because they're going to still spend the money. Yeah, he's going to get some backlash, but at the end of the day, his pockets are building up. That's all he cares about. You know what he should do? Since we know New Orleans, Atlanta, and the Buccaneers have to come to town, you know, collectively once per year, every year. He should just start offering up, you know, an NFC South PSL license for those fans so that they can alternate and come in and, you know, have a, have a seat to sit in. And at that point, you know what? Why don't you just offer it to every fan base that's going to be playing us? Just section off, you know, how in college they have the student section. They have the student section for the kids or the band. Just go ahead, section off, you know, half of the stadium for the other team. Even even charge more for the tickets if you want. And from a you know PSL perspective, go ahead and work with the city of Charlotte to find them hotels as they come in to travel. Get them the, the accommodations that they need. Why not, man? Because at this point, we are the laughing stock. We are the laughing stock of the entire NFL. Not just the NFL, but as a sports franchise. Complete garbage. You have Ron Rivera... Who you run off and now is doing okay. I'm not going to say he's doing great, but he's doing okay with the Washington Commanders. You bring in your guy, Matt Rule, and you bring in Scott Fitter. And I saw a tweet that talked about the Charlotte franchises, not just, or Charlotte sports teams, 
which you have MLS, you have the Panthers and the Hornets. And I said, and they were talking about how uh, I think the MLS team is 14th out of 15th in the rankings. Charlotte FC, you know, the Panthers are at the bottom of the NFL. I said, what do those things have in common? How about the ownership, the ownership of those teams? Here's the thing. We as a fan base can get mad at the coaching. And if we're being honest, the coach, the, the, the play calling on the offensive side of the ball is a joke. It's a joke. Frank Wright in his post-game presser said that at one point in this game, at one point in the game, he called a play that could only go to Adam Thielen. I kid you not. He said he designed a play or called a play that could only go to Adam. The issue was Adam wasn't on the field. So we couldn't run the play and we had to burn a timeout. I don't know where to take this thing, but when we're talking about the common denominator, it's the, it's Tepper. It's Tepper. He has made these decisions. He had a clear, clear as day, easy decision to make last year because guess what? It wouldn't hurt you. You could sit at the number nine pick. You could draft who you needed to draft. You still have Scott Fitter here. You give Steve Wilkes the job. You give him a one-year tryout. Nothing could go wrong. You still have your draft capital for the next year. So if things go terribly, you still have your draft capital. And then you get your quarterback, which could have been a, you know Drake May, Caleb Williams, whoever else is coming out. Even Spencer Rattler. i tell you what, he's going to be a talented quarterback at the next level. I, I I truly believe that. His stock is on the rise, potentially going in you know the first or second round next year, I think. He's a great quarterback. He really is. But here we are. The state of the franchise, it, it's going to be like this for the rest of the season. And it's there's no hope in sight because we don't have our first round pick next year. We do not have the first, what well, could be the first overall pick next year because we traded it away to the Bears. Scott Fitter is part of the problem. He has got us fleeced, fleeced as the kids like to say, twice on multiple occasions. I mean, more than twice. I'm going to dedicate an entire episode to talk about what he has done to this franchise, the trades that he's made, the capital he's given up, because he's part of the reason that this quote-unquote rebuild is going down the drain. Here we are. And I have to I have to, I have to do this in a position that uh, of how I did this and why I started this. Because last year when things were going bad and Matt Rule was fired and trade Anderson, trade McCaffrey – that was just the state of where we were. I was hoping that, you know, we do these things and then next year, this year, it's going to be better. We're in a situation where Brian Burns has become non-existent over the last few weeks. Yeah, he showed up a little bit, but he tore gross mottos, has looked even better. Jameson, rookie cornerback, has looked good and I'm kind of going around, but I, I'm at the point where Brian Burns has to be on the trading block because we don't have the capital and no... We just run into an issue with this because you have to decide, is Scott Fitter the guy to, to keep leading us? I, I I can't tell you. I can't tell you an answer. I mean, these are Tepper's people. These are the people that he wanted in here to run this organization. He's really just run it into the ground. I don't know where he's going to take it. If we look at the international series. There's all those talks about Jacksonville being relocated internationally. Why not the Panthers? I mean, heck, the fan base isn't there in the city. Not showing up to the games. Can't put a winning product on the field. What are we going to do? Don't I, I don't know what to tell you. Now, getting into the game, we were competitive. We were competitive as we always been, always have been in these first four four weeks. We go into the halftime, and it looks like, okay, things things are going well. I will say the clock management at the end of the half was terrible. Like Frank Wright had two timeouts. We had the ball with, I don't know if we had 30 seconds left on the clock or not. It was in that range. We get a completion and the clock is running and running and running. We end up getting like one additional play when we had two timeouts. We had two timeouts that we could have called. Like, dude, right, this is on you, man. You are the head coach. You have the ability to stop the clock. Stop the clock. What are you saving these for? We did not take a lot of shots downfield. 
a lot of the the ground game was running up the middle consistently with Miles Sanders, who is not fit for that. He is not fit to go up the middle. You need to get him on the edge, and you need to get him involved in screens and or the pass game. You know who is fit to go up the middle? It's Chuba Hubbard, who looked pretty dang good. And I don't care that you paid Miles Sanders twenty some million dollars for four years, and he doesn't look the part. Give Chuba Hubbard the ball. Move him up on the depth chart. I can't tell you to you know fix these things, but that's how you fix it. Play calling was atrocious, atrocious though. We did not score an offensive touchdown. That continues to be a theme. We put our defense in bad situations. And part of it starts with Bryce Young. I have been a Bryce advocate. I believe that Bryce Young is the future. What does the future look like? I can't tell you. I don't know if that's a future with playoff aspirations, not this year, but in in the next two or three years, or if we truly are running this entire thing into the ground. But I will say is Bryce continues to make the same mistakes. One, an inability to get the play calls in. And I don't know if it's Reich, partly could be Reich, but but we did not see this last week with Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton get, has got the plays in. He played with consistency. Miles Sanders even talked about it after the game, if you listen to his presser. But Bryce has struggled. I don't know why, but he struggled to get the, the play calls in. And it's it's been consistent. Like Even in the preseason into now, burning timeouts because of that, you can't do that. And yeah, Bryce is going to learn. He'll get through it, but you can't do it. Number two, when we talk about Bryce Young, he's got to figure out how to make faster decisions to get the ball out. Because when you look at his some of his plays, and I'll take a quick second to plug this. If you don't follow me on YouTube, go out to YouTube, just search two growls, one roar. I'll pop up. This past week, I did like a short film study looking at the tape from the last game. I looked at an offensive series and a defensive series. But this week, I'll be doing the same thing with Bryce Young. But I went back and looked. His inability to get the ball out and get the ball out on time is a problem because he holds the ball. And when you hold the ball, bad things happen. In college, he could hold the ball. He could escape the pocket. He had enough enough athletic ability to make one someone miss or extend the play. We're starting to see the defense get to him. He gave up five sacks in the second half. We did not make make any adjustments with Harrison Smith coming off the edge continually bringing the pressure. You know what the the Vikings did? They lined up everyone at the line of scrimmage to design, you know, to you know hide who was coming, who was staying back, and we consistently weren't able to to get the pressure. Bryce's inability to get the ball out. If you look at the the end of the game, I went back and watched the last two plays because fourth and goal was just a sack. But if you look at second and goal and third and goal, second and goal, he has a, a, a Amir Smith Marset coming underneath. He's looking to the left. If you go back and watch it, Amir is maybe running a two or three drag, two or three yard drag route, but that drag route is open. There's nobody around him. Bryce is looking right at him and doesn't make the throw and ends up getting sacked. If he lets go of the ball when he is supposed to, that clock goes off in his head. He hits him. You're looking at it at a bare minimum, a third and goal from the five, the four. I mean, there's a chance that he even takes it with his momentum and scores. But we didn't see that. He he just holds on to the ball. Same exact thing on the third and goal play. And we see it all game. It's like the internal clock isn't there. I just started or, or was watching Monday Night Football and watching Zach Wilson. And one of the things about having a quarterback that gets the ball out fast is you really can't blitz as much because you've got to stay back to, to be sure you can cover them. Because if they're getting the ball out in one to two seconds, you're going to get burned. And I think that's just one of the, the things that, that Bryce will learn as the season goes on, as he matures. You know, I owe an apology to everyone that I said that Bryce was going to be rookie of the year. And <laughs> I don't know. But the third thing, when we talk about Bryce Young, Outside of, you know, reading the defense, and I think that goes along with getting the ball out faster. He's got to learn how to secure the ball. This is becoming a recurring theme with him fumbling the ball. 
we were up 13 to 7 in the third quarter in the field goal range and yeah if p- people want to go back and you look at the plays before this we had the illegal man downfield and a few other things that backed us up i don't care we had an opportunity to at least get some points where we would go up 16 to 7 you know assuming Eddie connects because it was a decent field goal range and you're up by two scores. What happens? Bryce goes, rolls out, has the ball. I mean, it wasn't really out here, but it was a normal tackle. Like it wasn't anything like he was blindsided. He saw the defender. Defender punches the ball out. Scoop and score, touchdown. Momentum is shifted. 14 to 13 at that point. And that was it. At that point, I said, that's game. That's game. This team's deflated. We're not going to be able to move the ball especially with this play calling where we run about two or three plays where we go up the middle and then we throw a bubble screen after bu- bubble screen after bubble screen. It got old, man. We did see a little bit of life out of Terrace Marshall Jr., out of Adam Thielen. Positive signs there. Didn't really see a lot out of Hurst. Run game, almost non-existent. And defense said the defense did what they could do. You take away the offensive touchdown was like the scoop and score that the offense gave up and I mean I don't know what to tell you like I don't I don't know when we look at our defensive stats though I I just pulled it up before this and I think it was the commanders the Bears and Broncos and Dolphins are the four teams that have given up more points than us and you think about those teams all of them are bad except the Dolphins which I mean hey I don't know what the heck's going on in the NFL because they got blown out today but that's one of the the consistencies that we see and like are we that bad on defense no but when you put your defense in a terrible position I mean our defense scored our only touchdown the pick six, the bend don't break approach, 99 yard, Sam Franklin, very impressive. We get another interception on Kirk Cousins when we got pressure. Man, the thing when we talk about the pressure that we received, that Bryce Young received on some of those blitzes, Frank Reich was like, yeah, we practiced for this. It wasn't anything we didn't expect. I'm like, it, it had to be something you didn't expect because you did not adjust. You did not adjust or help your quarterback out because they continued to show that approach, bringing everyone up, and they still got the pressure and got to us, and you just didn't make adjustments, which is frustrating, man. You look for those things. This is supposed to be a veteran staff that's here to develop Bryce, and I I, I don't know. I mean, you're not. they're not going to fire Frank. They're not going to fire him in the middle of the season in year one. But as a fan base, like, I, it doesn't leave you a lot of hope. I can tell you this, like, hey, your your Sunday afternoons, you don't have to spend them watching watching this garbage. (laughs) I'm just telling you, I'm being honest. Like, go do whatever you need to do or watch another football game. Spend time with your family. Me, yeah, I'll be watching or maybe I end up just watching the condensed versions and calling it a day. Until then, until we... Sort this crap out. I don't know, man. It's 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 a very poor product that we're putting on the field. From a, I'm not even going to go through like the the stat line. I am debating as we talk about this, like doing kind of a breakout session during the week to kind of go through some of the stats in more detail. I mean, we held Kirk Cousins to 139 passing yards, 12 of 19. Very similar stat line to Desmond Ritter, who beat us. Like you. You have two interceptions. I don't know. Bryce Young was almost perfect in the second half throwing. He ended up being 25 of 32, 204 yards, the five sacks. Hurt us. We only had one big play, which was a 22-yard pass. There's There's just not a lot to write home about. Punt return game, ISM, Amir Smith, Marset, actually looked pretty good today. He had three... For 35 yards, 11 per return, or average about 11 per return. I I don't know, like, next step, like, where where do we go from here? Is it a team? Is it an organization? I don't know that anything's going to change this season. I I don't. No team, I believe, or there's only been, like, one team to start 0-4 and make the playoffs. I'm like, don't even talk about the playoffs anymore. Please, people. 
please just leave that alone because it's it's not a thing. <laughs> it's not a thing with this thing. The the bad thing is like Saints lost to the Bucks, the Falcons lost. So there was like an opportunity to gain a little momentum, not that we were, you know, in the hunt. But I think it also proves like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are three and one winning our division with Baker Mayfield. What can you like? What else can you say about the state of this franchise right now? I don't know what else you can say. I don't know how you pick a positive out of this entire thing. One thing that really ticked me off, listening to Reich talk, you know, he's kind of shifted his stance, as I said, as we've gone through this. Like, we all need to work on this, players, coaches, entire staff. Mike Tomlin, after the Steelers lost, in his presser, someone asked, you know, are changes needed, are going to be needed? His response was, hell yeah. Hell yeah, they are. That's all I want to hear, man. Like, take the ownership, right? Take the ownership. Figure out how to right the ship as best you can. Give us some freaking winning football. I don't care if we win seven games, five, six. I'll even lower it. (laughs) Lower it down to two or three. Like, But we've got to win football. Got to win some football games around here to keep this thing going. Well, that's all I got for today, folks. I'm going to... Uh, go through the all 22 film later so again follow me on youtube you can also follow me on twitter and instagram i I post a lot of content there during the week so you kind of get your panthers fix in between who knows what i tweet out because i try to stay in the loop with what's happening with with the team and also just my random thoughts as, as we go through that another good reason to follow me on twitter i've started a new segment called Monday morning quarterback where I just kind of do a, a short little write up on my thoughts on the team and where we are. So go ahead and follow that as well. And if you got friends, maybe you got some other depressed Panthers fans, <laughs> let them know about the podcast. I will tell you, I'm here. If you, if, if this is the first time you're tuning in or if you're just now kind of following along, I can tell you I'm, I'm an optimistic person. That this is just where we are, and I'm going to be honest and frank, so to speak, with with what we have out there. So anyways, that's all I got, Panthers Nation. Like, follow, subscribe, all the good stuff. I appreciate y'all. Keep pounding.